We got a 36 percent. The very next group is 50 some plus percent. That's white folks. Until you start seeing when that when white folks start when the divorce rates start trickling down to about the, the marriage rates trickle down to about 30 percent and they start having a bunch of babies out of wedlock. That's when you're gonna see white folks start changing the laws. But it is. They just they just got rid but of the it is. But, they, that, but they, you also start to see the laws change too a little bit. Happening. No, that's, that's what I'm saying though. But you're also starting to notice that they're starting to get you start to see more men win in court. You're starting to see them talk like it wasn't until the problem, it's the same thing with the crack epidemic. Until the problem hit their community, they did not care. As long as it was only happening to us, we it's all good in the hood. The moment they start seeing this shit happen to them, that's when you're gonna start seeing all these white judges say, Hey, no. Nah, you know what I mean? When you start seeing white judges get divorced by their wives and they trying to take everything for them, that's when they're going to start thinking about changing the laws. When you see these lawyers and these doctors and these police officers and all these other people start experiencing the same shit that's been happening in our community, I'm talking 70, 80 percent divorce rate, 36 percent marriage rate, babies out of wedlock all over the place. They women are turning, uh, saying they don't need their men no more. That's when you're going to start seeing these laws change. Until then, white folks just sitting back there. I just don't understand why men want to bind themselves to a situation that is supposed to be forever, but we know it's not. When that coochie start tingling again, she's gone. Literally, what what more do y'all need to see? Literally. <laughs> Shannon, you've been married twice, divorced twice. Damn, like, bro, what more do y'all need to see, bro? It's, it's up. Marriage is like a 90s hip-hop, the boom bat beats. That shit gone. Let that shit go. <laughs> Let it go. It's over with. And the old head's still talking about the golden era, right? Sorry, still talk, the the old head's still talking okay. about cool G rap. It's over. Okay. All right. So here's the thing. Stan's a clout. So what's the alternative? What do we do now? I so got the, the alternative. With. Marriage the alternative, as we've known it is over. Now what? Hold on. Why you can't just I be, think why? marriage I, being I exactly over, we need to what? focus on relationship exactly skills, what? right? We need more relationship skills. So we need more people talking about, okay, how to successfully co-parent. We need, we need more conversations on um, problem resolution between your mate. We need more, more conversations about how to make the relationship last longer. Forget getting married, just how to make a relationship last. We need more conversations about what to do. How do you deal with the feelings of, of, of cheating? How do you deal with feelings of, 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 of wanting to step out? Like when we have these real conversations, then people can become better people and, and then have better relationships. But I just think that we, we limit the conversation when we jump to, oh, well, you want to do it right, got to get married. That's cool and all, but... Show me how to do it right from where I'm at right now. How to be? Sh how about we talk about how to be a good boyfriend to your girlfriend? How to be a good girlfriend to your boyfriend? Let's start there. If we could start there, then we can slowly move up the scale and and, and get things Cloud, up to marriage. To right, go ahead, Louise. Go ahead, Louise. We have to change the culture and the culture around dating and relationships. Let's be very honest. It's poisonous. Today's culture of dating and relationships is very poisonous. Look at everything that they sell you. Ain't nobody, no young man wants to be sold on that. And that's why a lot of people resonate with what you're saying at this very moment, because they see the writing on the wall. But the how we fix this, I'm going to tell you how we fix this. It's nothing, it's absolutely got nothing to do with you, what Sweeney said. It has nothing to do with what Klaus says. It had everything to do with what Shannon said at the early beginning of the program. And I don't know if anybody picked it up. He talked about creating the uh manhood you know what i'm saying like you know how the sisterhood has one the manhood in that group needs to be an iron fist there are more men in the senate in all these other positions of power you mean to tell me that we can't all come together and, and, and voice our grievances in i don't know a, a, a legislation to make the laws even across the board make the laws more favorable for both parties that hold both parties accountable, right? You can't sit here and try to convince me that you're trying to change the biological makeup of women, how they think in a society where they run free and rampant, you want yet have adhered to no responsibility. You know what I'm saying? The same responsibility that Clot was talking about. That has to happen on paper and on legislation if you want to make that. You want to know why it don't work that way? The problem, the problem that they, that the problem that they, they, that that hasn't happened is because a lot of these appointments nationwide in small municipals are lifetime appointments, and so what people are waiting. This is what uh, 
what uh the lead attorney said what 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 has to happen is these old judges have to die out or retire it will eventually will it happen in your fucking lifetime will it happen in your generation maybe not but what's happening is you got those 80 year old judges still sitting on the bench right now and they're using 40 year old laws that they that that, that worked when they were in law school back in 67 and that's all they fucking know and they don't in all this modern shit that we talking they not they don't have no they don't have a smartphone they got flip phones they don't they don't they don't deal with that shit and they just say look this is what's on the books and it's easier to just keep what's on the books on the books than changing the shit cuz to change it means that somebody's probably going to get voted out and there's a little there's a whole lot of nepotism and cronyism going on and so the reality is the the lawmakers currently as it stands today there's a lot of old motherfuckers in there that don't want it to change but when they die or they retire and they and they can't move in 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 dementia and and old and and they can't walk no more and the young blood gets up in there things oh, might change hold on no 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 it's far more insidious than that i'm gonna tell you the reason uh, why no man hold on wait wait let me let me let me tell you louise you want to know why that we haven't seen any of these laws change because for by and large it's only happening to us we're the only ones with a 20 percent divorce rate i mean with a 70 percent divorce rate Marriage, we got a 36%. The very next group is 50 some plus percent. That's white folks. Until you start seeing when that when white folks start when the divorce rates start trickling down to about the, the marriage rates trickle down to about 30% and they start having a bunch of babies out of weird lot, that's when you're gonna see white folks start changing the laws. But it is. They just they just got rid but of the it is. But, they, that, but they, you also start to see the laws change too a little bit. Happening. No, that's, that's what I'm saying though. But you're also starting to notice that they're starting to give. You start to see more men win in court. You starting to see them talk like it wasn't until the problem. It's the same thing with the crack epidemic. Until the problem hit their community, they did not care. As long as it was only happening to us, we it's all good in the hood. The moment they start seeing this shit happen to them, that's when you're gonna start seeing all these white judges say, "Hey, no." Nah, you know what I mean? When you start seeing white judges get divorced by their wives and they trying to take everything for them, that's when they're going to start thinking about changing the laws. When you see these lawyers and these doctors and these police officers and all these other people start experiencing the same shit that's been happening in our community, I'm talking 70, 80 percent divorce rate, 36 percent marriage rate, babies out of wedlock all over the place. They women are turning, uh, saying they don't need their men no more. That's when you're going to start seeing these laws change. Until then, white folks just sitting back. Sean, saying, I see Sean. Go ahead, Sean. Yeah, I think I think a lot of interesting things have been said tonight. Um, my main takeaway, bro, is that um, I think I know that things are trending more towards what Jay stands is saying than what any of us are saying. And that's the honest truth. I, I appreciate what Shannon is saying. I think it's very insightful. Um, it sounds really good. But I do think it's trending more towards what Jay stands is saying. And uh, yeah, it's my final thought. All right, y'all, we got to start uh, bringing this to, to a close. Go ahead, Clout. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to add one more idea as far as, like, a, a solution. I think a great solution for um the problem we're seeing with marriage is, is one, no-fault divorce should be illegal. And I think, number two, I think we should do, like, term marriages. I think marriage licenses should be something that you renew. I think that it's just, if you have a child, it should automatically extend the marriage to 18 years. Right. And that, and now you can't get divorced in that entire 18 years. You got to wait it out. And at the end of the 18, you have the opportunity to either renew it or just let it dissolve uh, peacefully. I feel like if we develop some type of system like that, we'll fix marriage problems overnight. Like, yeah. But what's the punitive damage? What if, if, say for what if they because they tried that in, in, in China. What what happens if you don't. Then what you said, they go to jail. What happens if you don't you, what you. You willing to incarcerate a motherfucker because they broke up? No, they just won't be able to divorce. There'll just be no process for them to actually legally dissolve the marriage. That's all. They're just going to have to stick with it till their license runs out. 